Hi everyone, welcome to the last video of the Diabetes Addiction System video series. So in the last video we have designed our website which is now looking like this. Let me show you. Okay, so this is the home page. Welcome to Diabetes Prediction System. Let's get started. Once I click on this button, it opens a new page that is predict page. And here you can see uh, we have created the input boxes for various parameters. Now once the user will enter the values of these parameters and once the submit button will be clicked the result will be shown over here so um, now when i click the submit button nothing happens because we have not mapped our machine learning model to this button so in this video we are going to do this so let's get started in this html page it can be seen that once that submit button will be clicked that is over here input type is equal to submit for this form it will redirect to the result page so from the urls it can be seen that when we click on that button this url will be opened and this uh, views dot result function will be called now in the result function which is over there in the uh, views file we haven't wrote anything yet we have just returned the same page so in this function we are basically going to write our machine learning code that we have already written in the second video um, this is the code that we have written so far. We have written this in the second video. So what we are going to do this, we are just going to copy and paste the important code from here to our result function. So let's do it. Okay. First of all, uh, let me copy this, this first cell. I'll paste it over here. Okay. So the libraries are imported from here to here. Let me close this. Okay. Next, uh, I need to copy this lower data set code from here and paste it over here. And I don't need to uh, copy this dot head because we have just written this in order to see our data set, but we know, but we don't need it here. Next, we don't need to check for any missing values. And we also don't need to plot anything over here. Okay. Next, we have to do the train test split. Let me copy this code and paste it over here. Okay. Next, we need to copy this code for model training first. Okay. Now, one thing uh, can be seen here that here I have used this model to predict the values of the test set. But while working on the website, we don't need to calculate any sort of accuracy over there. So we are not going to predict um, the values for the test set. Rather, we want to predict the values for the input that is uh, entered by the user. So we are not, not going to copy this thing. Now for this model to predict the value on the basis of the uh, input that is given by the user, we first have to fetch those values that are entered by the user. Let's create a variable val1 for the first input. Now you can see that uh, in our predict page, we have given this name n1 to the first input type that is for the variable pregnancies. So this name will be used over here request.get n1 so that whatever value the user will enter in that input box will be stored in this variable that is val1. Similarly, we have to fetch the values of all the variables in the same way. Okay, so we have fetched our values. Now these values that are stored in these variables that test val1, val2 and so on up to val8. Now we have to predict the result that whether the person is having diabetes or not on the basis of these values. So let's create an, another variable that will store the result. Let's name this as pred equals model dot predict. Now this dot predict is an inbuilt function. And this model is this name that we have kept over here. And as an argument, we are going to pass the value of all these variables in form of a list. Val1, Val2. Okay. So now the this spread variable, this one, 
it will store the result that whether it is having diabetes or not. Now what we want is we want to return this variable to our predict page. That means we want to show the result over here in front of this result. Now initially this spread variable will store the values of 0 and 1. 1 indicating that the person is having diabetes and 0 indicating that the, per the person is fine. But we want the values to be in form of positive and negative. So let's map 1 to positive and 0 to negative. Okay, before then let's create a variable that we will be using for the returning process. Let's name it as result, result2 let's say, which is, which is basically a blank string. Now if this spread variable equals 1, then this result variable will store positive, otherwise it will store negative. Okay, now what we want this, we want to return this vari variable. So for that we need to write, after this we have to give an another argument that is result2. Now this result2 is basically the name of the variable that we have used in the HTML file that is this one, this result2. And, and after a colon, we have to write the name of the variable that we have used here for result. Now for this, we are using same variable. So let's change it to 1. And here I have to specify result 1. So we have written the code. So let's check whether this thing is working or not. Now I just saw that there was some error. It was not able to find this diabetes.csv file over here. So make sure you specify the correct path. Let me do this now for this. Make it a raw string. Okay, now it should work. Let me check this thing again. So let's check out for any arbitrary value from our data set. Let me try this on the 17th row. I've put all the values over here. So let's check the result. Okay, it is showing positive. And from here it can be seen that the results are positive because it is a 1 over here. So in this way you can definitely try on some other input parameters as well. One thing you need to consider that since the accuracy here is not very good, I mean it is not like greater than 95 or 96 percent, so it won't give the correct answer for all the inputs that you will try. Now in order to make the model more better, we can add some more parameters in it because I have tried to make this project as simple as possible so that it could be well understood by a person who is a beginner to machine learning. So hope you enjoyed the diabetes prediction system video series. In the upcoming videos you will find some more interesting projects related to machine learning and, and other topics as well. So in case if you have got any doubt or you are facing some error in any of the videos you can definitely write it down in the comment section. I, I will definitely try to sort it out. So thanks a lot for watching all the videos.